I'm going to make this quite fine. I'm going to make it into a little screwdriver point. Make this edge slightly more robust by beveling it because if I hit this with the axe or with another piece of wood, it's quite likely to split if I don't do that. And that's fine. Just make it last a little bit longer. If you've ever tried to, uh, to split wood before, you'll know that if you don't split it directly in the middle, it will invariably run out to where there's less wood. And what I'll be trying to do there is to give itself a weakness in effect by beating this into the log so that if there is a tendency for it to pull off to one side, hopefully it will pull back towards the centre because that's the line of least resistance for the wood to split. Make sure that before you start to split this wood in terms of taking the split further down the stick, that it's open all the way to the end. Otherwise there's a big tendency for it to quarter itself. And instead of having two halves, two neat halves, you have kind of one half and a ragged old quarter if you're not careful. Before I put too much force into it, I'm going to make sure that that split goes down and opens that log up all the way down to the bottom of it. I'm back to the wedge or the glut that I made and I'm going to continue opening that split up by hitting the, the, the wedge in. I could leapfrog two axes down here or two wedges or metal wedges. There's a whole array of variations but essentially I'm going to tap this one in until my axe becomes loose. I can then leapfrog with my axe, or another wedge if I had one, until this guy becomes loose. And you can see here that there's a disadvantage in using an axe, because invariably the shaft gets in the way, so I can't get the, the wedge particularly close to it. So with an axe what I tend to do is use the wedge just behind it, and take it down in very, very small increments. Once it's established, you can be a bit more ambitious with the distances. You can see now that the split is heading home exactly where I want it, right in the middle of the log. And with splitting wood of any kind, you kind of know whether you've done as good a job as possible if you can still see this faint line through the middle, which is the pith. So that's the remains of the tree before it became woody, when it was still herbaceous. And all, all wood or all trees have that. If you can expose that on both sides, then you can't have done a better job of splitting. So this te technique will work from anything from fence posts to bow staves. And um, thinking, thinking about bow staves, because oftentimes we're looking for very rare, very unusual, very critical bits of wood that we don't want to cock up. If I think that I'm finding it difficult to control the split, what I can do is I can start the split in the middle, especially when I'm using an axe, because of the sharpness of that blade will allow me to do that. That way, if the cut runs off, it runs off to one side at the end, and as all bows taper at the end, that's usually not such a big drama. Beat the axe into it. Once the wood's open, I can use my wedge again until my axe becomes loose. Well, that went quicker than normal. <laughs> no need to leapfrog, but hopefully you get the, 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 um, the picture there. We can still see the pith, so we can't have done any better than that. And we've got a perfect quarter, which can be the difference between having one chunky bow stave or two really quite nice ones.